If you're a live streamer, you might find this interesting. Recently, I had this obsession with wanting to change my whole setup to simplify it, but also stylize it a little bit. We all love the word clean. Oh, I want a clean setup. I want a clean setup. The cleanest setup possible is slap your camera, slap your gameplay, and that's it. The problem is that it looks like that's exactly what you did. <laughs> so I wanted something clean, but I didn't want people to be like, well, you just slapped that in two seconds. And this video is mostly about the alerts that I came up with, but I'm gonna show you like the whole thing. So this is my full screen, just chatting scene, right? One of the first things I wanted to do is basically uh, not have any sharp corners. Anyone who's used OBS Studio knows that, well, yeah, when you drag and drop or when you create a new source, it's going to be sharp. It's going to be a normal like rectangle or square. I didn't want to have that look. I didn't want people to be like, did you just put that's just how we did it, you know? <laughs> so keeping that in mind, I created my chat area. As you can see, it's just a rounded rectangle. Up top here, just a space for sponsor or images or any videos that I want to play on stream. Right now, we have the current goal for the money that I'm raising. By the way, if you can contribute, that would be awesome. Go to my Twitch, type exclamation mark goal. But behind it, there's actually another rounded rectangle with the blur. So I achieved this by just doing source clone and using advanced mask and then blurring that clone source. If you watch my recent video about making animated webcam borders, then you know exactly how to use the advanced mask filter. Anyways, okay, cool. Rounded rectangle, rounded rectangle everywhere. I also thought, hey, what if I had a rounded rectangle for my camera? You, as you can see, the corners are rounded. So I thought, why not play with this? Just play on that. Make it so that Yes, there's gonna be some sort of margin all around the webcam. Okay, cool, that's gonna look super clean, but then what do I do with this space? At first I thought, oh yes, I can just put like some graphic design, some motion design background, just looping. And then I'm like, that's the opposite of clean. That means that I would have something with extra details and colors all around the screen at all times, just a border. So then I thought, oh, should I just leave it black then? So my second idea was, um, I should just color it like, the Twitch colors, because I mostly stream on Twitch, I would just, you know, the UI is kind of gray, so it kind of looked like it fits within the website, right? Which is honestly like a pretty good idea. But then I'm like, I can really, really utilize this space, but only for specific moments. Having this border and using it for alerts, for example, will allow me to not have any extravagant like alerts on screen, like on me or on the gameplay. And instead of just talking, I'm just gonna show you uh, with Streamerbot here, let's trigger, let's trigger my follow alert, for example. Here's what happens when I get a follow. Sticks around, it lasts about 10 seconds, mostly because that's how long like the default stream elements <laughs> is lasting and I was too lazy to like change it. And it fades out, right? If I get a raid, this is what happens. And I have different colors for different things. I should. I should probably set up cheers. And I was kind of worried because I was like, people are immediately gonna notice that there's this big margin and stuff like apps. Apparently not. Apparently people don't even know it. Like you, you look at the stream and then you just forget about it until there's an alert, subscription, boom. And then it like hits you that, hey, something is happening. Also for me, I usually have OBS on my second screen. I can immediately at, like, at a glance, sometimes just in my peripheral, I can see what's happening. Right, I see the color, I know, oh, yellow, that's a sub, right? Now, of course, there are two things at play. Stream elements is what I use for my, you know, text alert. Here I have just an alert box. You see, very, very simple, but I had to go through it and basically turn off a bunch of stuff like alert variations and all that. I had to make the box uh, 700 by 100. And if we emulate a follower event, this is what it's gonna look like. And on stream, it is Super simple. Now, I need to make the colors match so that, you know, the name of the person is actually gonna be the same color as, you know, whatever is happening in my margins. But um, that's pretty much it. You have StreamerBot triggering it and in Stream Elements. Potential problem, of course, more more cogs in the wheel, more cogs, more the machine can break down more easily. Anyways, uh, <laughs> if there's any issue, if there's any delay with Stream elements, for example, uh, they're not going to trigger at the same time. It's not a huge deal anyways, but I've had some problems in the past with stream elements sometimes where it's like it's taking like five to 10 seconds delay before like a different service, right? It's not necessarily that it's late. It's like it's not in sync with everything else, which makes sense. But at the same time, I believe I use owned as a bot on my in my chat. 
So Owen will tell me what's going on anyways. So if I see the colors, Shermbot usually doesn't have any delay, always on point. So I can immediately see in chat what's going on. I can glance to see just the color to see what's happening. And, um, and then I have all the information, even if it doesn't appear on top yet. Another thing I need to work on is the sound. It would be cool to have a different sound for each but like something clean, something simple. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe I should just show you how I made it. So you can see in Streamerbot, it's super duper easy. It literally says OBS source visibility state visible, delay 10, 10 seconds, <laughs> and OBS visibility state hidden. So there's something that I'm turning on and I'm turning off and somehow it's triggering this animation. So it's like, what is it? What is it that's making it spread out like this and then after 10 seconds like disappear or fade out if you will well it's embarrassingly simple i have a scene here called alert back and i have a bunch of color sources that uh if i click on them they do this and then after 10 seconds they just fade out oh yeah since i manually turned it on i should probably manually turn it off there you go, you see it phase out. And of course, in OBS with sources, you can tell them to have a transition when they're turned on and you do that by right clicking, going to show transition. And the one that I picked is Luma Wipe. Then I found Barn Door Horizontal. I put 0.13 as the softness to get that effect. That's it, that's it. And then to fade out, right click, hide transition, fade and then you set up like the milliseconds right so i have 500 milliseconds for that barn door effect and i have 300 milliseconds for the fade out for all of them boom we can do a little cool we we i haven't set them all up on in um streamer bot yet i think i'm gonna change their height transition to to fade out a little more smoothly now, if you're wondering what the gameplay looks like um it's still my webcam um that i have like in a separate scene Okay, that was weird. Uh, I have my webcam in a separate scene so that if I add it to a scene as a scene, I can put it in a group and then add whatever restraint or filters that I want to that group. It also lets me add the rounded rectangles in multiple ways, right? For example, you're gonna see cam group and that's the group with my camera. And since I added the shader filter plugin to make it rounded, so it's rounded rectangle, shader filter, look it up. <laughs> And then my camera is basically inside of it. What I can do is I can uncrop my camera. Please don't act weird. There you go. And maintain the exact same rounded rectangle aspect. Because if you add the rounded rectangle to the camera and you crop, it's going to crop it out, right? The filter is not going to follow the crop or something. So this makes it super versatile, especially since I'm playing different games and doing all sorts of different stuff all the time. It's pretty cool that I can maintain this whole rounded rectangle look no matter what I'm going for. Now you also probably notice that there's game group and you're wondering, hey, if you have your webcam like this, do you also have your gameplay in a rounded rectangle? And honestly, yes. <laughs> yes, I do. And this group has a rounded rectangle shader filter. Uh, let me see if I can find, or oh, you can't really see it, but you can see that it's uh, a little cut out. So that's the little sacrifice that I'm willing to do. If for example, I don't want it to cut into the game, there's like crucial information that I wanna show. I can always like set another, like an empty color source that's like full screen and then just crop it down or just like scale it down actually. So it won't cut as much into it. Let me put some fake gameplay so you can see what it would actually look like. I'm gonna drag it and drop it inside of my game group. And I do the same, for example, if I wanna show something to the stream, I have my window capture. It's also inside of the game group because like I need it to be. <laughs> I basically need it to be so that I can have that little margin. And yeah, this is pretty much what it looks like. I think I have the sidebar. Yes, it's right there. I have like a smaller version of the sidebar where I can still have my goal, whatever I'm doing. And this is actually for chat. Uh, can I switch to my Twitch profile without crashing OBS? Oh, yes. There you go. See, there's like a little uh, minimalistic version of the chat here if I want them to appear in the VOD or if I'm recording something. But yeah, I thought about making a full video explaining the whole concept and the whole setup, but to be fair, like this is mine. <laughs>
I don't necessarily want everyone to be replicating it, but uh, if you want to know how I basically blocked, quote unquote, blocked the scene, I created this scene called frames. Wait, let me see if I can find where I could basically test where things would be. You can see frame chat blur, frame chat. I know that my chat would be here. Uh, frame sponsor. Wait, I have a bunch of, I have the smaller one here. Let me turn it completely off. There we go. So I know that background is going to be here. Then I'm going to have my frame main. This is basically the gameplay or my full screen. And then I would have a uh, frame chat. So that would be the space for the chat frame sponsor. And then afterwards, um, what I can do is for some of them, at least I can use the advanced mask plugin to use this as a mask. But for things like chat, uh, you have to physically place chat here. So using the shader filter rounded rectangle also helps. And then we have frame sponsor. And here I had my chat box just to test it out like that. This color looks weird, man. <laughs> yeah, that feels more familiar. So there you have it. I'm not saying that, hey, this is cool and you should absolutely do this. I'm just saying that, hey, this is something that I implemented in my stream recently. Let me explain it to you. Also, I want you to maybe be inspired to be using StreamerBot for alerts on top of whatever alert service you're using or just use StreamerBot because StreamerBot can control OBS completely. It can do anything. So alerts doesn't have to be like the same gif plus text thing it you're allowed to be more creative than that you're allowed <laughs> it can be something else it can be and i'm keeping it clean and simple i'm trying my best to keep it clean and simple if you want to go all out you can definitely do that i have videos on how to really really go all out and have audio react to it shake the screen even send shock waves but that's all on my channel and you have to watch my videos make sure you follow me on twitch and that's it Bye bye